coming to peace with your past, how do you do that when you don't remember it? I think here you have to be very careful. Some people will say, well, all you got to do is do this regression therapy and, and you'll see everything and then you can come to peace with it. But that's dangerous because you may not be ready to see it. For some people, what happened to them as children was so horrible that the brain shut that off as a as a self-defense mechanism so they can't remember. And I think this is dangerous that that you need somebody who is really good to evaluate whether you should go in there or not. Because most people are not ready for it. And so when they see it, they go into shock and they might develop another mental disorder because of it. So they only made it worse than it really needed to be. So uh, what has to happen, what needs to be discussed is the thought itself of, should I even do this? Do I find any value in that? There shouldn't be any goal placed yet. No goal. Yeah, but just to say, okay, there is a possibility that we can tap into it. But do I want to do that? That's what needs to be discussed first. Because in most situations, it's not a good idea. It's not good to do it yet. And maybe much later. Because other preparations have to be made first. People you know, they need to discuss how can I prepare myself for this? Some people say, well, there's no way you, you can know. Yes, there is. There is too. And what needs to happen is that you address what you do remember. Because that's the foundation to it. So you just address what you do remember and come to peace with that first. When you're putting together something, you don't just grab all the pieces and see if they fit, then go to the next one. And <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna end up with a funny-looking creation. <laughs> no, no, no. You have to identify all the pieces first. What parts gonna go together? Put over there. These other parts look like they're gonna make something. So you put them over there. You just identify different parts and put them together into little piles. Then you approach it and you say, okay, what can I learn from this one? So you just come to peace with what you do know, what you actually remember. You have to have a really healthy understanding of the purpose of difficulties. You really have to make sure you understand that. And experienced people will help you with that. They'll know if you're there. Then if you're there, you take the time and you say, okay, how is my life right now? What is happening in my life? Because for people who are all at this stage, their life situations may be different. So in some cases, they may this is, this is all they may need to do. That's all they may need to do. And others, it may be different. So you, you have to examine everything that's happening in your life. What are you? Are you a father, husband, mother? What are you? What's your occupation? All these things have to be taken into consideration. Because some people are more analytical than others they may be able to handle this earlier or maybe not. It just depends. And you have to decide. Do you want to go forward? And if you don't feel like it, then don't. 
Never force yourself to do something you're not ready for. So you don't. You just wait. Because one day it'll come to you when you will say, you know what, I'm ready for this. Even if 20 years have gone by, you cannot look at things in a linear way. It doesn't matter if it's 20 years later. What matters is if you'll be ready to face it or not. And it, it doesn't matter how long that takes. Okay? And then you really should be evaluated on your emotional stability. And then you do your research of who's really good at this. Because there's some people who don't really know what they're doing. There's some people who just took a course in it and they think they can do it. And there are these holistic people that think they're healers, but they're charlatans. They don't know what they're doing. So you have to find out, if you go this route, yeah? If you continue, you have to find out who is really good at this. And you have to set up all kinds of safety precautionary nets, safety words, or whatever needs to happen. And then you have to really discuss you know, with that person exactly what is going to happen. And they will tell you what I'm telling you too, is that as soon as it gets uncomfortable, we're going to bring you out and take it baby steps at a time. As soon as it's too much, we're going to bring you out and then we're going to talk about that. And then we'll rest. And however time you need to rest, if you want to go further, we can. If you don't, that's fine too. Sometimes people put their toe in the water and it's too damn cold. That's okay. You don't want to freeze. So you don't want to go in. That's fine. It's nothing wrong. You did not fail. You're just not ready. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You did not do anything wrong. There's nothing wrong. It's just not time yet. Yeah? It's okay. Totally okay. And again, you have to really keep a non-linear thought process on this. Don't decide, okay, well, three months I should be ready. You know, don't, don't give yourself a time deadline. You just work on yourself until you do feel you're ready. You really take it slowly. Slowly go in it. A good therapist will, will do this with you. And eventually when you get to the point where you do see what happened, then of course it's going to bring incredible emotions. It's really, really going to be hard. But you work up to it. If you want to do this, you don't have to do this. You should never force yourself to do something like this. You should only do it if you feel you should do it. If you don't, then don't. Because as long as you're at peace with what you know, you will live a good life. You will still live a good life. So don't worry. But when you do go all the way, like I said, you have to have all kinds of preparation. But let's say you do. Yeah, Let's say you follow everything. You prepare good and, and you take all the time necessary to get to there where you see what happened to you. But you prepared yourself. You will feel the emotions. You'll describe what you're seeing and feeling. And then when it's time to come out, you come out. Now everything is on the table. Now you can talk and slowly, slowly work at coming to peace with that, which is going to be hard. But it's a really slow process because this is a delicate situation. When you diffuse a bomb, you just don't, eh, I'm going to pull this one and this one, then boom. <laughs> you have to really know what you're doing to get it right. And that's the same thing with this process. So this is not for everybody. You know, this is something that really, really is, needs to be discussed because lots of people try this and they don't know what they're doing and they end up seeing, <laughs> they're seeing what happened and it's overwhelming to the point where they, in some cases, they become catatonic. 
So this is something you don't want to play with this, especially when you're dealing with somebody who doesn't have any experience in this or somebody who just took a course. You really have to be careful with that. So this is a special situation when you're dealing with trauma. It's, it's, it's hard. But it is possible. And there's ways to deal with things too, you know, to set up like a routine where when you start feeling something that you go through this list, that you always have it with you, that okay, you know, you do some breathing exercises or get up, take a walk, drink some water, whatever. It might be different for everybody, but you do whatever's on that list to to get yourself calmed down, to get yourself stabilized. And then I think when you do that, you're, you're finding a way, and that's good. It's good because you're acknowledging it's there. And that's better than trying to deny it. When you acknowledge it, that's healthy. And then just slowly take it from there. So it is possible, though. Yeah. But like I said, you have to get somebody really good at this because sometimes a therapist will say something not good. Because when a person is under hypnosis, they're very susceptible to suggestion. And whatever is asked of them, they may visualize it. So what happens is that the therapist might suggest, okay, let's say she's got a young woman under uh, hypnosis, and then, and then the therapist says, okay, what do you see? He says, well, I see my father standing there looking at me. Then the therapist will say, is he looking at you sexually? See, there's the suggestion right there. So then she sees it. It never happened, but her brain is really vulnerable right now because she's not not in control. And so whatever is asked of her, that person's going to visualize it. So then the lady will say, yes. What's he doing now? Is he coming to you? See? This is power of suggestion. Next thing you know, this therapist is saying that this woman was molested by her father. So next thing you know, he's being taken to court and he's facing some years in prison here. And this never happened. See, now the, the girl created memories based on the power of suggestion. So the memories are false. They're false memories. They never happened. But because the girl was under hypnosis, she really thinks they did. It really shows you how powerful the mind is. These things never happened, but that the memories were created because of the power of suggestion of her therapist. So they're false memories. See, these appear to her as real memories, even though they never happened. So as a result, she cannot face her father because in her mind, her father molested her, even though there's no evidence of it. But in her mind, that memory is there, even though it's false. Her brain interprets it as a real memory, but it's false. That's why I said when doing this kind of work, you have to really find somebody who is good and who doesn't use power of suggestion. You have to really be careful with this because when people are under hypnosis, they're very prone to suggestion because the mind is totally vulnerable. And when you suggest something, the mind will create an image which then transforms into a memory. So when you have a therapist or a hypnotist who is not good at this, they could actually create false memories. They could influence that person to create false memories, the person who is under hypnosis, and this is really dangerous because in their mind, 
this false memory is real. The mind is so powerful that the images can really induce emotions, very strong emotions in some cases. And it, it all looks like it's legitimate. Some people try to use this to recover memories. And before you even attempt doing this, is that you people need to be evaluated by very, very, very respectable and thorough means to uh, ensure that the person, the candidate, is emotionally stable enough to handle this because they might see something that is going to put them into shock and it might give them a emotional or a mental disorder or maybe both so the person should be really evaluated thoroughly very closely by very very uh, respectful and reputable people people who are good at this and then proceed with extreme caution because a memory could be uncovered doing it this way and it could be uh, traumatic and it could like I said throw the person into a mental or and emotional disorders so you got to be careful but a lot of therapists are not good at this so instead what they do is they they suggest scenes to the patient and the hypnotized person, their brain is really vulnerable at this point. And then when the hypnotist is saying something, the brain can then create an image, and that image will have emotions because, remember, the mind and the body and the emotions and the soul are all connected. So when the brain creates an image, it's going to have emotions with it. And so it's going to come across as real, as legitimate, and it's false. And another thing is, the mind leads to other areas of spiritual realms. This is another reason why we have to be careful, because not all spiritual realms are healthy. A lot of people think that everything in the spirit is good. No, 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 no. Unhealthiness is everywhere, and so is healthiness. So it's not about good and bad. It's healthy and unhealthy, two different things. Which means that when something is unhealthy, that means it can be neutralized. When I say to be experienced, that person has to be careful because something from another realm could come through. And this is when it gets dangerous really dangerous because most regression therapists don't believe in that and they're going to have a problem with it. That's why I think for me, I wouldn't suggest it. Unless you have a regression therapist and a holy person working side by side willingly then if it could be possible. But I don't think that's ever going to happen. Because scientists mostly don't accept people of spirituality. But that's extreme. So anyway, I, I myself, I would not suggest regression therapy because the mind leads to other areas of spiritual realms and some of those realms are unhealthy. So an unhealthy energy could come through there and look at your mind and pick up all this information from your mind and create images of people you know and even sound like those people. And you have a danger of becoming schizophrenic as well. So it's really dangerous to do that. And like I said, most regression therapists are not going to believe in these spiritual realms. So 
so when something does come through, they don't know how to to calculate that. Instead, they're going to say, oh, the person has multiple personality disorder. In that situation, it's not true. It's something different, something coming from another realm that is, is messing with this person. It's an unhealthy entity. And most regression therapists, they don't believe in these realms. So the safest thing, don't do it. That is based on Lakota Star knowledge because Lakota Star knowledge teaches about what I just said, that the mind, there's part of it leads to other areas of spiritual existences, spiritual realms. And some of these realms are unhealthy. So if an unhealthy energy comes through while you're under hypnosis, it could really mess with you. And the hyp- the hypnotist is not going to know what it is. And they're going to misdiagnose you. And you might be taking drugs or something you don't even need. Because you might end up with a mental and or emotional disorder. You don't want to take that chance. So best thing, don't do it. You are a very valuable person. You are a blessing. No matter what's happened to you in your past, no matter how bad you feel about yourself, I promise you, you are a blessing. Just work with what you have and what you know. As long as you do that, you're doing healthy communication. And natural law of generosity says that's going to return to you four times as strong. So that's going to come back to you to bless you. And that might even enter the parts of you that you don't remember. And that's going to settle that score. Just think about that. Okay? Don't worry. Just live your life as healthy as you can by taking care of yourself, physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally, as best as you can. To read more about Lakota Star Knowledge Spirituality, you can read my book called Wichoha Otechike. You can see the book cover on the right side of this screen. This book contains the information to what I talk about on my Lakota Spirituality videos. To purchase this book, please click below where it says show more. Clicking on that link will open up the description below and there you will see a link called to purchase my books. As you will see it's an eBay link. Click on that eBay link and there you will see the information to get this book. Lila Pilamayelo. Thank you very much.